Hi, this is Kate McKinnon with Contemporary Geometric Beadwork. I'd like to show you how to decrease a hexagon into a set of mirror tetrahedra. This is a continuation of a lesson on how to make a kaleidocycle with just three beautiful flower forms, three little flower nets. Uh, this one has six triangles, two each of three different designs, and I created three flower circles join them into a ring, and now I'm starting to join the cylinder of flowers into a kaleidocycle. This is an exceptionally easy way to get this machine together, and it was designed specifically to help beginners have something that they could hold in their hands to play with to intuitively understand how a hexagon can, if it wants to, always come together in the middle and form a set of mirror tetrahedra. So there are many ways to get to the end of this machine, but this one fascinates me. One of the things that I learned when I decided that I wanted to show you how to decrease the hexagon into two beautiful triangle faces is that I had to think about what that triangle face looked like spread out. And as it turns out, if you simply exploded this fourth face of the kaleidocycle, it would go psh, and the beads would be evenly scattered around the edge of the hexagon. I think there's something incredibly beautiful about that. To save time in the video, I have taken the liberty of installing the first round of beads and then just a little bit more on one side. You can see that I just wove through. This, if you remember from part one, is the busy face where I put join beads at just absolutely every place I could. And I even crammed two out on the tip of each triangle. And I did this more as an illustration that it's not so important how many join beads or where they're placed. It's only important how you end up hinging or joining this machine in the end. So three different things to show you. One will be how to put in pre-made triangles, just drop them in and sew them in as I've done with this one, and that will be a common tactic as many people who make a kaleidocycle make 24 triangles and will have a fourth face available. So if you've got one made, we'll just drop it in. If you don't, consider decreasing one with me here. And then the third thing I'd like to show you is possible tactics for exploring a completely open face to the cycle and letting the fourth face of the tetrahedra simply be inferred. So first off, let's go back to decreasing a hexagon into a set of mirror tetrahedra, which is just two triangular boxes and each triangle is made of four separate triangles. So here we have three and three, and we're going to pinch it together in the middle and decrease this beadwork into two separate triangles. I've installed the first round, and to do it, I was rather a careful little tailor. As you can see, I didn't make a mass here in the corners. I traveled down with my thread into the beads and came out around to lay in this first round of beads. There won't be any more of that necessary as we're going to simply jump across to the gold beads to finish the triangle here. Uh, but I thought it was nicer to let the machine remain connected in an open fashion where it was open to begin with. And on one side and one side only, I installed a little blue bead here in between my excessive amount of join beads and I thought that it might work out for them to share that as it came together and that that dark blue bead could represent as our other hinges have a blue line so that we could understand where things have come together. So I have installed the first round which is uh, eight beads per side, just like all the other triangles. It's going to be exactly like this one that I pre-made, except I may or may not, I don't have to continue all the way to the center. I can leave it open. So decreasing is something that is difficult to think through, but it's really actually very easy to do once you understand the process. You see how I just pulled those two beads together from the last round?
Well, I think this is a very interesting tutorial for a decrease because you can clearly see that it doesn't really matter if they were ever connected before, does it? You can easily connect a triangle or any sort of beadwork really from separate unconnected sticks. And that's exactly what's going on here. These three sides aren't particularly connected, but they will be when I'm done. So I'm going to keep this thread pulled fairly tight so that this doesn't gape open up here at the top. It's going to keep it snugged up, nothing more. After I've gone around this edge just once, this triangle will be closed and then I'll have the opportunity to decide how much more I want to enclose it. Now I'm coming up to the second edge, second end, end of the second stick, and again a decrease as I say, sounds intimidating, but in reality, it's just the motion of, instead of placing a bead at the end of your line, drawing your two end beads together. So we're drawing them together essentially out of thin air, and the beads don't mind a bit. Now, as we get close to the hinge, you can see that we have to pay attention, but this isn't difficult. And it was not difficult to add those gold beads to the existing join beads, the little red beads. But if it had been, I could have also made the choice to go into a row of beads right next door. There are no hard and fast rules about how you finish these pieces. As I mentioned in part one, if you have got a machine that's connected, turning smoothly, and cleanly made, then you have succeeded, and there's no two ways about that. We have found so many different ways to join these pieces, it makes our heads spin. So let's see, I'll calm down here again for you. And you can see that this side isn't perhaps as orderly as the others because of the excitement of the hinge, but it is in fact just eight beads in a line. And here is where it might not look right if you're looking at it gape, but remember, this is just our step up to the first round, and I am going to come in and join the first two beads of the round together. When I pull this through, you'll see, oh, well, look at that. It's just a triangle after all, just a triangle. And then as I continue, beating in this round, you'll see the form pull together. I'm going to hold it together for a minute, and the hinge row will begin to behave uh, as soon as we get another round on. So let's look at the decrease as we go along. And now I want to, as I am decreasing, right, I want to remember that each round will have one fewer bead at the end. And when I come to the end of each bead in line, I'm not going to add a bead. I'm going to gently hold the two pieces together. You see how I'm lining them up? I'm not going to get a skew because I might not be able to easily see that the bead I belong in is right there. And now I've completed a second decrease at this corner, and you'll see this piece start to behave just like a regular triangle face any moment now. <laughs> well, this is perhaps the easiest triangle decrease I've ever done. Just like sewing in the 
fourth face that I did previously on this triangle next door was also the easiest kaleidocycle join I've ever done. I have a great deal of confidence that this flower face join will be very comfortable for beginners to do and it offers a lot of immediate success. So I feel great about it. I want to thank you for participating in it because it's going to make a difference to beaters around the world as they build their confidence learning what appear to be very difficult things. But like the Kaleidocycle, it turned out, didn't it, just to be a fairly manageable little pile of triangles. Okay, so now I want to be very aware as I come down to the last bead in the row and I am going to go through its neighbor, right? And you'll just, you'll know right away. You'll be able to see right away if things aren't lining up properly. And if they don't look right, they aren't right. And you need to take a look, see what you've done, and fix it if need be. I tend not to pull my stitches very snugly if I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> I'll wait until I am to pull my thread cleanly. And, oh, I think we can see now, things are going ve very well. And I'm going to go ahead and close this last decrease and show you the step up, which I guess is really more like a step down, isn't it, when you're decreasing? Our step up comes into a step to the center. The most important thing here is taking a look before you put your needle through to see where you feel you should be and then you'll have a lot more confidence when it's time to place your stitch if you've had a good look at it first. Now I'm at the end right? and I am going to again want to match this up cleanly with its partner and in this case and you see this is exactly where my step up is so I'll be passing through two beads, just like any other step up or step down. <laughs> and now I'll be on the next round inward. And so can you see how that works? It's just a really neat drawing inward. These were three separate lines of beads, and now they're connected. And as I continue going around the edge and refining the shape, it will hold form more and more and it will resemble, just in the next round, the structural integrity of the pre-made triangle. So let me be right back with you after I've done just a little bit more beading in. Well, I have to say I very much enjoyed this triangle decrease. This is probably the simplest and easiest decrease I've ever done. I went around the center beads, the white beads, a couple of times when I was done to really make a firm opening and you can see how nice that would be to bezel a rivoli or anything else that you wanted to hide down inside this tetrahedra. There's a lot of space in there and you could have fun with it. I'd like to show you close up how to also join your fourth triangle face. Many of you have already made your fourth faces and you're keen to join them into your flower net so it's easy to do. You just fold the tetrahedra or fold the hexagon over in half so it starts to make the set of mirror tetrahedra and join your triangle on one side using the join beads that are already installed at the edge of the hexagon. Pass through the beads that you're not using and fold your triangle over to the next side. Joining to a hinge is often what people find to be the most difficult about joining a kaleidocycle. But I think that you'll find by adding this fourth face in at the end, it makes it just a walk in the park. So I'm going to hold these together in a way that's comfortable for me so that I can clearly see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to lace these beads. Let's see here. It's always worth taking the time to get comfortable before you start sewing. I do that and then I get my death grip and I don't let go. There we go. Now I can clearly see that I'm going from these gold beads, right, 
into these red join beads. And if I can't get through two at once, it's no big deal. I'll go through them one at a time. So I'm going to go like this. And then you need to be sure to remember which red join beads you're going into. It can be tempting to just skip across and go into the wrong ones. So I'm going from there to there. And now it's sorting itself out quite nicely. You can see that my next stitch will be from here into this red join bead. Right? And I have to tell you, if you've never joined a kaleidocycle before, joining this fourth face into the hinge is usually the part that is stressful and difficult to manage. And I think you can see that this is not, and there's plenty of room for my needle. I'm using a size 11 tulip needle. It's a slender needle, but even so, this is no trouble. If you've had difficulties getting your triangles joined, then you may have, as I said, extra thread down there. But if not, you will find this to be a really easy way to do it. So I'm just walking through, passing through the beads that I'm not using, and I got through three at once there, so I'm ready to do the final side. And it's going to be just as easy as the other sides, but I need to be sure that I get this wiggly little machine in the right place, hang on to it, and then it's just a matter of lacing the beads together, isn't it? So I'm going to come in here, up through here, and there are only five beads. Doesn't take very long, and it's not stressful. It's just a matter of getting a good grip on it and making sure you can see what's going on and being mindful of loops. And that is all there is to that. And your fourth cycle face is joined. Right, that's it. Now you can reinforce this thread. I will probably weave it in and reinforce the first join because I that's how I roll. Looks like we just had enough light at the end of the day to finish. There's a beautiful storm rolling into Boston, and I'll be enjoying it in just a few minutes. See how simple that is? Fourth face, in like a dream. And if you'd like to add a fourth face to every one of these slots, then you'll have a traditional, fully functional, fully hinged cycling machine. When you're thinking about this open space, that's created by folding the hexagon. Remember too that you can do things like create fill. This is like a little well of blue fading to black that I made to just slip right down in the slot to show you. So this is seven beads deep and the triangles I'm working with are eight beads deep. So this should, if I get it right, fit right down in there. If I wanted to, that would be a surprising face to turn up, wouldn't it? A beautiful well of color. A little hard to see in this light right now, but that's an interesting idea. And that's the kind of thing that can go inside a tetrahedra too, is something to line the inside of it with a wash of color. So I'm very interested in your ideas about what you might do with open faces. I've suggested building a well of color bezeling a rivoli, or creating a small scene inside with your design. I look forward to all of your ideas, and I hope that you enjoy making your flower face kaleidocycle, whether or not you choose to add the fourth face or enjoy it as a flexagon. Thanks for playing. <laughs>